Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Total Biscuit. Let's have another look at the Steam sale, which will be ending on December the 1st, because we would like to see whether or not we can pick up something really cheap. Now, the previous video, I looked through some of the best deals. This video is going to be about very, very cheap games. Every game in this list is a dollar or less, and they might not be the best games ever, but some of them are pretty good and probably worthy of a dollar, I think. That, that sounds fairly reasonable. Hopefully they are also your regional equivalent without being ridiculous, but I cannot guarantee that considering the wonky nature of Steam's pricing sometimes. So we're going to start off with stuff that I found for under 50 cents and then go all the way up to stuff that costs about a dollar. Let's kick it off with Anomaly Korea. This is 49 cents or your regional equivalent. So the Anomaly games are Tower... Offense, I suppose, is probably the best way to describe it. Bit of a reversal of the tower defense formula in which you have to maneuver a set of vehicles through the enemy towers while using various power-ups and different compositions in order to beat their defenses. Pretty fun, actually, and surprisingly so, considering that it's a port from the mobile. It's actually a pretty good port from the mobile device and very much worth playing. All the anomaly games are pretty fun, but Korea is the cheapest of the lot, so perhaps worth a look. Everything in Z-Boyd Games' catalog is under 50 cents at the moment. So Z-Boyd Games, for those who do not know, are those responsible for Breath of Death, as well as Cthulhu Saves the World, and two of the Penny Arcade RPGs. All of their games are 50 cents or less at the moment, and uh, if I were to just grab one of them, I'd grab Cthulhu Saves the World, which is a nice little twist on the old idea that Cthulhu is somehow the bad guy. Thing is, you can get Cthulhu Saves the World and Breath of Death 7 for the same price, as a double pack, so it's probably worth grabbing those. They're, they're classic style sort of NES RPGs, but with a little interesting twist of humor on them. The Penny Arcade games are a little bit more difficult to get into because the chances are you haven't played the first two, but they're still very much playable. And if you like the classic style of RPG, then I think you will have a lot of fun with this for very little money. Orion Prelude, 49 cents for some pretty janky dinosaur FPS mayhem that actually still has a player base, surprisingly. Is this a good game? No, it really isn't. Like, it, there's so much to criticize about this, but it can, every now and again, actually be kind of fun. And for the price, if you're looking for a big, dumb shooter that has dinosaurs and flamethrowers in it, then... You can't go that far wrong for the price of a packet of crisps. In fact, can you even get a packet of crisps for 50 cents these days? Probably not. Ares Extinction Agenda. So this is a little bit Metroidvania, a little bit action platformer, and it's got a great soundtrack as well by Hyperduck Studios. I think it's worth it just for the soundtrack, personally, but otherwise it is a pretty competent action platformer with a couple of little Metroidvania elements in there. Not too many, don't mistake it for a pure Metroidvania game just because the protagonist reminds you of Samus. It's not really true, it's more of an action game, but still pretty enjoyable for the price. And again, for 50 cents, we have a Vegas Make It Big. That is a management city building game, very often overlooked. I think a lot of people don't really get what this game is supposed to be. They think it's actually just a piece of shovelware. It's actually a really good city builder and management game. I enjoy it a great deal. It's a little bit old now. I mean, it is almost 10 years old, in fact, but if you wish to build a casino town, well, this game's actually got quite a lot of that. It's surprisingly fun to play. All right, moving on to the 75 cent category. Not too much in here that I like, but we do have Dead Pixels, which is a... Fairly retro-inspired, I would say, side-scrolling shooter, but with some really weird survival elements to it. It's mostly just about shooting zombies, but there's actual elements of resource management, little RPG bits here and there in this game. So if you can stand the art style, which is very much the good old retro-inspired 8-bit nonsense, then there's actually quite a lot to like about this game. And another oldie but goodie, this is Patrician 3, which is a trading and economic sim based, of course, in the Renaissance period. It is quite a lot of fun, and if you happen to like tall ships and all sorts of things like that, then Patrician 3 does offer quite a lot of strategy, and unfortunately, that series did go downhill after that. As I said, it's a little bit dated, but if you're looking for some classic and somewhat slower-paced trading action, then I think that Patrician 3 shouldn't disappoint. 
All right, moving up to the 80 cent category, all the Commandos games are in there. Commandos 1, 2, and 3, plus the expansion. These are really, really difficult and amazing. I'm actually kind of annoyed that they haven't made a proper reboot or sequel of this because these are tactics games, real-time tactics games, very challenging real-time tactics games. Surprisingly enough, the graphic style holds up mostly because a lot of it's pre-rendered, and it, they are very, very challenging. It's about stealth, it's about strategy, and they're all really great. Worth trying if you're looking for a challenge. As I said, very much old now, but definitely worthy of your time. If you're looking for some fairly laid-back and well-presented puzzle action, then Tidalus or Tidalus will probably do the job for 80 cents. There's also a demo available if you need to demo an 80 cent game. It's a rather enjoyable little block-based puzzle game with a nice presentation style. A game that is frequently overlooked perhaps as a casual title, but actually a fairly enjoyable and content-rich little puzzle experience. And last but by no means least in the 80 cent category, we have Who's That Flying? If you remember my video, WTF is WTF, that is that. It is a side-scrolling shooter in which you play a superhero, and uh, the game itself is fairly enjoyable, but what I really enjoyed was the ridiculous plot and the cutscenes, and for that price, it's worth a couple of hours of your time, certainly. All right, moving on to the rather competitive dollar category. This is where most of the good stuff is. Firstly, Saturday Morning RPG is an RPG, and nobody is surprised by that. For some reason, this game just didn't do all that well, which is surprising because it has a really amazing little presentation style. Absolutely love it. And you will be fighting various cartoon-inspired things from 80s and 90s pop culture, which is really rather enjoyable. It's packed full of references, it's the sort of game that you should be playing if you happen to be my age, and it's actually very enjoyable. DLC Quest. Now, ironically enough, I would say that this game actually wasn't worth the money when it first came out. It's a nice little satire, a little platformer which takes the piss out of DLC culture, but ironically enough, I think it was actually just as guilty as some DLC for not really being worth the price tag. For under a dollar, though, yeah, it, it's worth playing. It's like an hour to an hour and a half's worth of content at most, really, but it's a nice little cathartic experience that might give you a bit of a chuckle. Psychonauts, an absolute classic, no real doubt about that. Getting on in years, certainly, and definitely not the ideal PC port, but Psychonauts is worthy of being experienced. It, it is that good, it is that imaginative, it's probably Double Fine's finest hour, honestly, and it's certainly disappointing that we haven't really seen its like again. Screw the meat circus, that can go to hell, but everything else, wonderful. Frustrating, but wonderful. Serious Sam 2. Here's a nice little FPS if you're looking to just uh, blow off some steam. Serious Sam 2 is really, really good at that, and of course costs almost no money whatsoever. If Serious Sam 3 was a little bit rich for your blood at $4 yesterday, then perhaps Serious Sam 2 at 99 cents will be more up your alley. 10 years old, but honestly doesn't look like it. A nice, colorful, and enjoyable FPS experience. And on the Serious Sam train, we have Serious Sam Double D XXL. This is an action platformer. It was part of a series of spin-off games, and this one is about stacking guns on top of each other. You can quite literally stack guns on top of other guns to make a massive tower of guns and obliterate people with it. It's actually pretty damn funny, and I would strongly recommend picking it up for that price. Not the world's best game, but you've got to admit there's... A quite a lot of enjoyment to be had in stacking 10 guns on top of each other and opening fire on a giant lizard. Costume Quest. Here's an adorable little RPG from Double Fine, which is of course based around Halloween. Costume Quest 2 is also around the place, but it will cost you significantly more. The original Costume Quest is a good few hours of fairly casual, fairly simple entertainment with a great art style and some pretty unique ideas when it comes to turning your costumes into wonderful summons and creatures. Just bear in mind this is unfortunately locked at 30 FPS, although it is an RPG, so that is not going to affect your enjoyment too much. Deponia. This is a seemingly unending series. There are a lot of Deponia games, but the original Deponia, which is a hell of a lot of fun and still a very impressive looking game simply due to its rather timeless aesthetic, is available for a mere 99 cents. That is an absolute bargain. Daedalic have been putting out some great point and clicks, and if you're looking for point and clicks in the classic style, then that's what Deponia is, and 
I'm just surprised it still looks as good as it does. What can I say? They really nailed the art style on that one, and it's a good time to get started on a fairly lengthy series with this one for next to no money. Stacking, another double fine title. This is about using Russian dolls to somehow infiltrate various areas in a rather strange authoritarian world. It is the sort of thing that only Double Fine would come up with, and it is surprisingly enjoyable. A nice little puzzle game that makes you think and certainly has some very unique mechanics and an excellent presentation style. It's just a, a gorgeous looking game, really. Absolutely love it. This one is, of course, also locked at 30 FPS, which is a little bit annoying considering it's a kind of real-time third-person puzzle, but regardless for the price, it is worthy of a look. Space Cam, this game can go to hell. If you want a title that will make your brains melt out of your ears, that's it. This is it right here. This is a highly acclaimed puzzle game that made me feel like an idiot. If you are smarter than me, or at least you think you are smarter than me, then by all means, attempt to take on Space Cam. I absolutely will not take any responsibility for the misery it may inflict upon you. Ring Runner Flight of the Sages. Again, something of an overlooked title, kind of my fault to some degree because I kept meaning to look at this game and never really got around to it. So Ring Runner is a 2D space adventure game, top down, and yet it has a huge amount of content. You're actually flying around the universe, unlocking new ships and upgrading, trading and doing all sorts of things. It's actually a fairly lengthy game, surprisingly enough, and it's got a great deal of depth and an awful lot to it. But I think it's one of those titles that just sort of got lost in the shuffle, really. And I think that for 99 cents, you could certainly do a lot worse than having a look at it. It's got a surprisingly interesting plot as well as a ton of ship customization. Plus, it's got a bunch of additional modes just in case you actually get bored of that. And it's got multiplayer. It's a, it's a lot of content for 99 cents if 2D top-down space shooters are your thing. And last but by no means least, we have Blood Rain Betrayal, which is a side-scrolling action game. Some people didn't like this one. I actually enjoyed it a great deal. I suppose that it has some fairly annoying mechanics, in particular when it comes to some of the bosses, but I was actually quite impressed by both the aesthetic of the game and the relative depth of the combat system. It's not an easy game, and it's by no means the same as the previous Blood Rain titles, which were third-person action titles, but I think that if you're looking for a bit of a challenge and you like your flashy action platformers, then Blood Rain Betrayal is that. All right, folks, there you go. There's a list of stuff that you can get for under a dollar or your regional equivalent that, in my opinion, is worthy of that price tag. So by all means, go and pick up like 20 games for $20. There's a lot of fun to be had in them. My name has been Total Biscuit. Thank you very much for watching. And do remember that the Steam sale does end on November the 1st, so grab these titles over the next few days. If you enjoyed this video, then by all means, feel free to click the like button. If you did not and you hate good deals and good games, then... I mean, the dislike button's there, I guess, if you want to be horrible about it. I'll see you next time.